really pushing to get the win at that time. Yes, although it is early to tell, we do see that they are going for the same bands, understandable. And we also see the Rumble pick as well. Rumble actually being a very good pick and competitive player right now. We're seeing in the flexed in the top lane, mid lane, and even in the bot lane in the support role. Yeah, that the alt coming out is just such a big game changer, and uh, especially with any heavy CC uh, paired with it, it can just completely mm -hmm. shift. And his early game pressure is just really hard for a lot of uh, comps to deal with. And now, as we finally get mm -hmm. into the first of the pick phase, and Leona is picked first for the, I assume, the McMaster bot lane. Yes, and as we saw, we saw them ban the Misfortune, the Aphelios, and the Alistar. That just screamed to me that they wanted to try to take away as many picks from St. Clair as they could in the bot lane and get that priority. They got the Leona, and I, something I actually expected was the Senna here. And we heard Blazin talk to us earlier today how he doesn't want to play Senna, <laughs> he doesn't like playing Senna, he thinks it's a boring <laughs> champion. But when you see Misfortune and Aphelios, man, you kind of say, okay, well, I kind of need to get something good here. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, although Zyra Khan is open, it looks like that they're going to end up going for the Senna Nautilus lane. Yeah, you could go for the Zyrocon, but I feel like uh, Leona does, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Leona does pretty well into that because mm -hmm. even though even though Rakan's really good at dip and dive and back and forth and keeping uh, the enemy on their toes, Leona's just pure yeah. aggression. He can't do anything about it when she grabs that. Exactly. Zaya, especially pre six. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. he, he he tries to do something and he's just kind of sitting there. Right. Mm -hmm. And even when he plays aggressive, before the W comes out, she can stun him. Exactly. It, it seems like in that lane that if he wants to try to do something proactive, he can't necessarily do anything. If he wants to play defensively, Leona doesn't really care and wants to do something anyway. So now we see the set pick. The newest champion added to League of Legends, usually being played in the top or even the jungle sometimes. Yeah, uh... Without proper information about uh, their preferences on where to go, uh, we can't quite make a guess on where the set is mm -hmm. going, but I'd, I'd assume it's pretty safe to say it's probably jungle because generally when you're doing pick ban, you want to leave your uh, top and uh, mid picks for the second mm -hmm. draft, second side of the draft, so yep. then you can try to get that counter pick in and force the, especially when you have that first or last pick, so you can force your opponent to uh, choose a bad matchup. Yeah, and that being said, that's part of why in the first part of draft, taking these flex picks is such a powerful move because you're d not necessarily committed to putting it in any single lane and you can actually fit it in accordingly based on what you think is the best for those matchups. And now we see the Olaf being picked on the side of St. Clair. Olaf being an amazing, amazing jungle pick right now. He's just absolutely, he's insane. Like He does so much early game damage, he shuts down these assassins. And that understands why he actually ended up banning Lee Sin, because Lee Sin is actually one of those champions that can actually get Olaf down low enough to, with his burst to try to shut him down early. Yeah, and especially uh, in the jungling situation, Olaf, while an amazing brawler and able to duke it out with the best of them, Lee Sin just has too much damage mm -hmm. uh, right off the bat for him to do anything. So he has to give up those scuttles. He has to give up uh, lane pressure. He can't be in the same lane that Lee Sin ends up ganking. Mm -hmm. So it uh, creates a lot more issues. So getting that man out and then picking the, picking the Olaf. And what also works is to kind of go back to what we were saying earlier is it might even be a flex still. Uh, yeah. Because if I'm not mistaken, uh, Olaf does fairly well into set. It could be. Yeah. And uh, that being said, um, we see the Fiora ban on the side of McMaster. And what that screams to me is that they actually want to put that set into the top lane because mm -hmm. Fiora would just do so well into set because if set tries to charge up his huge ability that does true damage, there's nothing stopping from Fiora from parrying that ability as well as even the ultimate. And that just completely shuts down set and not to mention the amount of sustain that she has in those long lasting fights. So that's actually a really, really bad matchup for set. So it's understandable that they wanted to get rid of that Fiora because we do see that Lord Touch Me actually does play Fiora really, really well. And they're actually going to lock in the Kled here. Yep, so that confirms that the Olaf is most likely going into the jungle and uh, with the information you were talking about, we probably have the set going into the uh, top lane, so now it's going to be interesting to see what uh, pick McMaster, pull, what two picks McMaster pulls out as they have to pick both their jungler and their uh, mid laner into Ooh. this draft. Yeah, and I was about to mention that both teams here are lacking a lot of magic damage on this team. And we see the LeBlanc pick, very, very nice pick, respectable pick there uh, for executed, probably definitely sending LeBlanc into the mid lane. I can't imagine where else she would be going. Um, oh, yeah. But that being said, they ended up pick 
they end up having to pick this mid pick first. So that's actually going to give the Young Falcon that counter pick into the mid lane for the walk. So that means that they could maybe we might be able to see something like uh, even well, I know I'm biased when I say this, but Kiana actually <laughs> does really well yeah, into yeah, LeBlanc. Yeah. That being said, they don't have any magic damage on their team, so I can't quite imagine we're going to be seeing that pick here. We see the Jarvan picked as well, as we expected. Set is probably going to be going into the top lane, Jarvan into the jungle. And uh, we got 10 seconds left on this pick, and the Lissandra pick. you got to love that pick. Oh, yeah, coming in with that Lissandra, trying to make sure to be able to keep the enemy team locked down. Uh, really big uh, turnaround in team fights once that first pick comes out. Mm -hmm. So both comps are actually super team fight focused with a bit of, bit more pick on the side of mm -hmm. uh, McMasters. So going to be interesting to see uh, as how the game develops once uh, laning phase ends and they, they're able to start making more yeah. uh, proactive plays across the board. Um, all the champions going into the expected positions uh, that we that we were discussing earlier, set in top lane, Jarvan in the jungle, uh, got Olaf in the jungle, uh, Cloud in the top lane. Uh, what are your thoughts on what might be happening in the start of this coming game? Well, I think in the early game specifically, it definitely seems like the side of McMaster has a lot more try kind of proactive play here with the LeBlanc and the J4 to try to set up ganks. That being said, if we look at the side of St. Clair, uh, Lissandra has a lot of setup on her own, but it's going to be a little bit difficult for Olaf to try to get onto the LeBlanc if she still has her distortion up. Uh, that being said, if we look in towards the bottom lane as well, it looks like that Center Nautilus is just, it's just such a strong lane, you know what I mean? And Leona being a very good pick as well, it seems like that there's not actually going to be that much happening in the bottom lane because I feel like Nautilus and Leona are just going to butt heads a bit. Senna and Kaylin are going to do a few trades. Maybe Kaylin gets a heal off of Fleet, Senna gets a heal off her Q, and then they just kind of go back to farming waves. Uh, as we get into the mid lane, though, I definitely think that Kled has a lot more split push potential than Set. So I definitely want to see St. Clair try to do a 1-3-1 th here and put maybe Kled in a side lane on the opposite side of the objective, put Olaf in a side lane on the side of the objective, and then send Lissandra, send a Nautilus into the mid lane and try to get something going on there. Because they actually do really thrive at skirmishes. Five, they do have a lot of 5v5 potential with Nautilus and Kled and Lissandra. Um, but if they want to try to do that, they would be able to do that with the Kled ulting in from a side lane anyways. Yeah, but the... The one thing that the interesting dichotomy that this creates is uh, with the splitters that they want to go splitting is that they have to build some MR to have to to be able to deal with the LeBlanc, which yeah. feels which will feel really bad because there's only one and it's a burst focused AP damage. But if they end up in a lane against uh, either against the LeBlanc uh, mm. during that split pushing phase, then they'll just be uh, screwed over if they don't have any of that uh, MR to actually help assist them. Yeah, and it seems like McMaster actually recognized that, that they might actually want to send LeBlanc into the side lane to match the Gled. We see that she took TP, and in a lane against Lissandra, you... There's many other summoner spells that you might consider taking, even cleanse. Or like, mm -hmm. usually you would see Le LeBlanc take ignite uh, for these try to get those early game cheese kills. Uh, but that being said, even cleanse is really good here. I would, I honestly probably would have taken cleanse myself, uh, just because I want to try to stay alive, like from the Nautilus or the Sandra engage as well. Um, but the TP, they definitely recognize they needed to try to match that Kled. Set's not going to be able to do it as well as they're going to want him to. Uh, he's not necessarily a split push king himself. So him taking that TP, is actually he's actually going to be able to try to duel this Kled very well. Yeah, I think the biggest thing with Set going into the Kled isn't necessarily that like if the Kled leaves him alone, that there's the threat of him getting a ton of tower damage and getting those big split pushes. It's more the fact that... You don't want the set gang big, so you can't leave them alone to farm. And set can as set can sit there and box with Kled for days, right? Being one of the currently one of the best survival champs in the game between his W and how his grit works. So it's uh, it's going to cre create a giant stalemate in the top top lane anytime that they're there together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it seems like not not really any one of them has that much setup. So if we're going to see anything happening in the top lane, it's definitely going to be more reliant on the Olaf and the J4 to try to set something up. I don't necessarily think that lane is going to be a priority as far oh, yeah. as trying to set up kills. I definitely think this mid lane is actually going to be huge here because both of these champions have a lot of push and roam power. And it's going to be up to Lissandra to try to shove that wave in on LeBlanc to make sure that she can't roam. And then when she does that, it's going to be up to them to actually try to create roams towards the bottom lane themselves. 
I definitely think Lissandra is going to be very capable of doing that, and especially since they had that counter pick into the mid lane, they're definitely going to be able to try to do something here. Oh yeah, and uh, with Lissandra specifically coming in into the LeBlanc, it's obvious that St. Clair probably has some form of game plan for that. They're going yep. to probably really gun for that level 6, uh, especially now that we know LeBlanc doesn't have uh, cleanse, doesn't have any way to get away mm -hmm. the minute Lissandra yep. alts her. So even if she distortions away, Olaf and her will just be able to easily chase her down. Yep. So it's all on the LeBlanc and the J4 to uh, take advantage of Lissandra's poor... Uh, uh, spacing in the mid game in the early game sorry mm -hmm. and uh, really just put her behind before she even gets a chance to uh, start just setting up those one shots with her jungler and then just roaming like crazy mm -hmm. yeah that being said looking at these two teams chase what do you think we're going to see like and any predictions um Start of the game is going to be pretty slow. There's not going to. I don't see any invade. I don't see anything silly happening. Uh, it's going to be pretty much. Uh, it's going to be a really slow match happening until that five to six minute timer hits, and then the uh, champions are starting to hit level three to four. Uh, junglers are going to start going into going to start gunning towards that mid lane after they've gone gone that first couple levels. There's going to be at least one or two uh, short skirmishes in for scuttles, and yep. uh, I think that will be what starts deciding the pace of this game. Yes, absolutely. And we're starting to see nothing out of the ordinary. A little bit of taunting happening <laughs> in the line of scrimmage here. That's college esports for you. Oh yeah, even in the even in the pro level, sometimes you'll see them oh, yeah. uh, d uh, playing around with each other, right? That kind of uh, playful sportsmanship. Exactly, and look at that. Looks like LeBlanc gonna get the, or sorry, J4 gonna get the early ward there. That's actually a really important ward. Oh, uh, yeah. Not only just because you can see when he's getting over there, but now they're gonna be able to tell where Ooh, he's getting going a bit to aggressive starting. onto the Caitlyn there, taking out a flash with the Nautilus hook. Uh, Caitlyn already losing her flash for that first uh, mm -hmm. little bit, going to possibly decide a uh, early trade in the bot lane. Yeah, that's actually a little bit of greedy positioning there. They knew that Olaf actually left towards the the bottom side because they ended up putting that deep ward there so that they're able to tell where Olaf actually is and the fact that Caitlyn was actually up there without any vision of where the Nautilus and the Senna are is actually really really like kind of questionable because they have like a lot of really good level one damage there and they ended up just burning the flash early so I wouldn't be surprised to see Olaf try to get something happening here in the bottom lane. Oh yeah and just uh, with even with Caitlyn being able to take advantage of the positioning uh, that her range provides, Nautilus Hook just goes so far, and there's not a lot you, that uh, Caitlyn can do about it once she's hit, because it, even if you uh, buff her an E immediately when you're hit, the auto attack will still come in and get the guaranteed snare. I see the Glacial Augment proc there. That's exactly why a lot of Senna's are actually taking Glacial Augment there. I, I was a little bit questioned at first. It's like, oh, ADC taking Glacial Augment. Why is that happening? But the reasoning for that is that you can actually get a really, really good trade in when you get an auto attack and then you get your Q off to go as well. And because they're slowed so much, you get a another auto attack in to get that triple hit in there. And it just does such a good trade. If they try to do anything back to you, you just end up getting the healing on the Senna anyway. So it's almost like a guaranteed win on that trade here. Makes me think a little of uh, when Aurelian Soul used to be a really big pick, and that was his main thing. It's basically mm -hmm. the exact same trade trade idea, just uh, done a little bit differently because of obvious differences between yeah. the champions. Yeah, definitely. Completely agree with you. And uh, actually, Lissandra is actually pushing it really, really deep here. She has the E available, but uh, yeah, see, there you go. She's actually a little bit scared of that LeBlanc because she has no vision of either side of the river right now. But actually, J4 are going to be spotted with Jesse spawning him on the river there. They're going to try to look for the uh, maybe skirmish on that top scuttle crab here. actually going to be pretty important. Yeah, and uh, with it's going to be interesting dichotomy here because uh, Lissandra's pushed in and has the superior positioning to uh, help uh, Olaf as he as he starts going in on the Jarvan. Uh, small skirmish in the top lane, uh, allowing uh, Set to win as the, oh, bot lane, as the mid laners are fighting with uh, St. Clair's standing the lead, getting in that big damage on the Blanc, the passive coming out. Uh, Jarvin going in, trying to pop that flash to knock up Alessandra. Great flash from Olaf to get away from the set. There's the what we were talking about with the set being able to come down. Big W coming out, getting that big damage, and uh, McMaster able to get the first stock with uh, the Jarvin Q as it looks like Lissandra gets away uh, just barely safe. Yeah, Sekiro going to end up picking up that first blood that's actually huge there. He was already an entire camp down onto the Olaf there, but that's actually going to be a huge, huge swing there. 
Scuttle Crab in the top side still available, but he's actually just going to go straight down, take the bottom one, knowing that Olaf is pathing down towards the bottom side, expecting J4 to try to take that top crab after that. But look at top lane. Ooh, and uh, the Clyde able to finally get that kill on the set, taking advantage of all the damage and uh, resources he used in that previous fight. And it looked like, looking like Lissandra almost taking the stock, uh, taking the life from. Uh, LeBlanc, but just barely uh, not getting the kill. And Jarvan getting his second kill of the game. That aggressive jungling and uh, great rotations from McMaster to uh, now get them two kills ahead and uh, 1K gold ahead. I heard that inner smash cast <laughs> come out there for a little bit. Taking the stock. I knew I was going to say it once. I knew I was going to say it once. Yes, for those of you who don't know, Chase is actually a pretty good smash player. Uh, so might hear a little bit of uh, Smash references here and there, intentional or not intentional. Uh, that being said, though, we see 3-1 kill lead on the side of McMaster. That's actually huge. This J4 is going to be absolutely huge this game. He's actually looking towards the top side right now. Oh, yeah, trying to get in on that Clyde, but the positioning, not quite able to get the uh, big old knockup, but Red getting buff. a ton of damage in. And that uh, E coming in from the set, getting a ton of damage, and the W t fully taking out uh, Scarl and leaving Clyde in a very precarious position as uh, he has to sit around and wait for this uh, wave to get pushed into this tower. Uh, do you think that they'll be looking to set up the tower dive potentially on this Clyde? Tower dive, not necessarily right now. The reasoning why I say that is because we see that the Mountain Drake is on the map and there's not a top side objective aside from the turret itself, like or the Kled. So that being said though, in a couple of minutes when the Rift Herald does spawn, I wouldn't be surprised if they try to set up a tower dive on the Kled because if they do end up getting that kill, they're going to be able to rotate over towards the Rift Herald and take that no problem. And if they do end up committing the J4 into that top lane, it's almost inviting Olaf, Senna, and Nautilus to try to take that Mountain Drake. Yeah, absolutely. And it depends heavily on uh, whether the Caitlyn and Leona are able to uh, push out and keep that aggression while they're going for that Rift Herald. Uh, bot lane's been just kind of ignored overall this game. Yep. So it's... Uh, who do you think's kind of on top currently outside of the basic CSing? Well, it's, we already see a 1.2k gold lead going over to the side of McMaster. Um, most of that gold is on the J4, as if we look at the bottom of our screen, we see that two kills on J4. He hasn't actually recalled yet. He's about to complete his first recall, and he was already doing that much with just his Hunter's Machete. So I would imagine that he's gonna complete or half of his jungler's item, maybe get a couple of long swords if he wants to go warrior build, and probably grab a pair of boots as well, maybe a control ward as well. And I would definitely imagine that both junglers are gonna start prioritizing the pressure around the bottom side of the map right now to try to get them out Drake. And uh, it looks like he's actually going to be going Cinder Hulk build here. Uh, typically what we see more in pro play and competitive play is that we see J4s actually go Conqueror plus Cinder Hulk as opposed to Electrocute and Warrior. Which is more of a solo queue strategy because you got to try to actually hyper carry your yeah. games 1v9 here. Whereas in this game, uh, you can tell that both junglers recognize that what their role, what their roles actually are in the game, and that J4 realizes, yes, I'm fed. I'm just gonna be this champion that doesn't die, and I'm gonna set up kills for my set, my LeBlanc, and my Caitlyn. Absolutely, and uh, it's always in coordinated play. It's always a lot scary to be against someone that's able to constantly sit there and provide pressure and uh, be a uh, CC nuisance the entire fight mm -hmm. rather than someone who can come in and potentially one shot you because if they miss that one shot they're screwed and now the Jarvan coming in on the Olaf the superior positioning of the bot lane making this look like it's going to be a really big kill uh, as the level 6 from Jarvan making uh, the Cataclysm create an easy kill bot lane trying Whoa. to get the Caitlyn TP. but not able to get it and the TP coming in from LeBlanc uh, Going to clean up this kill on the Nautilus between all of the bot lane, sharing that kill between four people, and with the big wave pushing into the turret, Caitlyn has no choice but to try. To, uh, Senna has no choice but to focus that as they move over to the dragon. Yeah, I really would have liked to see Nautilus actually hold his flash there. I think in that kind of situation, when there's already people behind you trying to chase you, running towards your turret, and you see the LeBlanc actually TP on the other side of you, you're kind of sandwiched in that situation. The only way you're getting out of that, if you are going to flash, is you flash over the wall and then end up pulling yourself towards your turret. But even then, when you're already 25% HP, that's such a risk. I think in that situation, you kind of just accept the fact that the enemy team had a lot more teleport pressure on you. You take the death and you save your summoner spell for maybe another other potential play later on. Yeah, which then also creates a positive summoner spell trade because now you know, oh hey, their teleport's gone for a while, I still have my flash, and uh, Caitlyn, even with two levels behind, able to Ooh. get a ton of damage on the Lissandra, providing that pressure. Uh, Set and Kled just constantly boxing in the top lane as we were talking about. Uh, like we were talking about earlier with, even though uh, Set can't really 
directly kill or fully uh, get Kled unless he takes out the Skarl and then gets an Ulten or something similar. Just because he can sit there and tank all Kled stuff and just keep pressure in the lane, mm -hmm. it's more than enough to uh, pressure back against the St. Clair split pushing as it looks like uh, McMaster is starting to uh, aggress on to this Rift Herald, knowing that Kled has to back. Olaf can't pressure this, and Lissandra is only now getting back to lane and providing the free Rift Herald to make McMaster's lead uh, grow with more and more time. Yeah, I really, really like this play. We saw the teleport play into the bottom lane that originally got them the kill on Night Soap, and they immediately rotated over, took that Earth Drake, and then on top of that, they didn't even recall. They just went straight up towards the top side. Or maybe they did recall. I could actually be missing remembering that but they uh, went straight they haven't. they haven't yes okay and then they ended up going right back towards the rift herald and securing that objective recognizing that it's been eight minutes and that it's spawning so they ended up getting two objectives off of that kill on night soap yeah which is a huge huge uh, pace changer for the entire match uh going from that almost even to uh trade in the bot lane from earlier to now uh, fully just went <laughs> stomping over this game as uh, the Rift Tail comes out top lane. It looks like they're taking out the turret and the slow rotation from uh, St. Clair's uh, bot lane to the top lane, meaning that it looks like they're going to get this turret more so for free. All right, it seems like they're actually going to retreat after that. They do have the pink ward in the tri bush, knowing that nobody is coming for them. Olaf and Clyde both spotted there. I think they might have been able to go for another play, but it seems like at the pace of this game right now, they're not tr they're not going to greed for that play. They're definitely heavily out tempoing St. Clair right now, as far as rotations around the map, around these objectives, and it it's just evident when you see that they go for the Mountain Drake, they go for the Rift Herald, they go to right to top lane, drop it, get those plates. They don't even greed for a fourth play. They instantly recall and they're going right down bot lane before the Kled can get anything from that. Yep, and I think those smart plays are really what is going to show uh, McMath uh, McMaster's pace yeah. for this because it allowed, K uh, K like we mentioned, they hadn't backed yet all before that. So getting that back in, getting that uh, really cementing that gold lead into an item lead is super important to make sure that they keep winning this game as it looks like the McMaster switched again to having their bot lane uh, back into the bot lane. Why do you think that they might be looking to pressure that? It's actually a little bit interesting to see that St. Clair is still up in this lane. I think the main reason why they did it was to originally match that Rift Herald push, and they kind of are just lagging behind these rotations, and they're still up here. What I would really like to see right now is I would actually like to see St. Clair send their bot lane towards the bot lane, because as we see in 90 seconds here, we're going to have that Ocean Drake spawn, and that's going to be the objective here, but it looks like with Olaf in the bush here, they might try to set up a dive. Yeah, setting up a dive into the set is interesting because he's really tanking and he's taking a lot of damage, Ooh, but it's looking like someone get bursted down. The W coming in, uh, just uh, able to get the Nautilus with the, ult, the set, Senna and Olaf trying desperately to, t to chase him down. The Flash coming in, LeBlanc coming in to uh, get onto the Senna, getting that big damage in. Uh, the Q just barely saving her health-wise as Set finally goes down to Olaf and LeBlanc trying to, trying to look to get that kill on the Senna, but uh, Senna being smart and running away as she just gets chased down. Oh, guessing on the wrong on the clone uh, as a uh, great uh, distortion to get away and uh, now finally able to get the kill onto the LeBlanc. What originally looked really, really sketchy there was we saw that Knight Soap take a lot of turret shots, try to tank for his teammate, which is actually really good. But then when Set has that pull, he pulled him back into that turret, got another turret shot on, getting that kill for free, and almost looked like he got up. But look at this. Oh, <laughs> Jarvan coming in and getting the big damage. Uh, St. Clair being a bit too uh, greedy with that and losing their center for it. And uh, Set coming in uh, not fully respecting what that teleporter re represented. Yeah, I think that Senna has actually been on the map for about five minutes now. Ever since that Rift Herald was taken just after eight minutes, they rotated in the top lane. They instantly they stayed there. They kept farming. They set up that dive. But she never actually recalled. She had that pickaxe in that tier for quite some time. Now she's mm -hmm. got her tier two boots. Now she has her mana immune. So maybe they're actually going to be able to try to set up some scaling here. Knight Soap doing his best to try to clear this wave. It's looking like uh, Set can just ignore the Nautilus and do a ton of damage to him at the same time and uh, try to get more damage out on that turret using the... Uh, I can't believe I forgot the name of the summoner. Uh, <laughs> Flash, Ignite, TP. Not the summoner that does damage to turrets. 
Oh, Demolish. Yes, I can't believe I forgot the name of it. And Jarvan getting a big damage out, one-shotting between LeBlanc and Jarvan, one-shotting the Caitlyn and making Kled just have to run away. Uh, kind of more taking after his uh, actual riding companion than his own uh, playstyle. Yeah, it takes the stock onto Blazin there. <laughs> 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 As, uh, yeah, they're going to end up uh, getting the Ocean Tree. That's going to be second one going over towards McMaster. And it looks like the Cloud Wind thickened. So now we're actually going to see multiple Cloud Drakes come up for the rest of this game here. It's going to be Cloud Soul. And what Cloud Soul does, for those who don't know, uh, upon casting your ultimate, you actually get 50% bo bonus movement speed to King over a short period of time, which is actually going to be huge for these fights. As we see LeBlanc, J4... As, long, as soon as they pop his ultimates, oh wait. Ooh, big engage coming out onto the, Lebl onto the LeBlanc, what we were talking about earlier with how, with how to do it. Great job uh, separating between between Olaf and uh, Ooh. Ooh, and the snipe coming in to finally uh, take that uh, kill from on the side of uh, St. Clair, but not done yet. Trying to get onto the aggression, onto the Jarvan, taking advantage of the fact he's got no team around him. He's a full tank, and uh, Olaf is going to be able to box with him. The Senna ult coming in, maybe a bit too early, not really able to affect that fight as now it looks like we're... Uh, 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 ooh, the flash ult coming in from the Jarvan, trying to get that aggression onto the Olaf. Great ult from Olaf to ooh. block from the uh, the Eclipse, but uh, not able to survive the sh the ace in the hole from uh, Caitlyn. And the fight continues on. The aggression coming in from uh, Senna's ult down, so she's not able to affect this. Set onto the back line, uh, getting that damage out onto the Senna, finally taking it. Kled trying to do the same onto the Jarvan, but not quite able to get the kill as uh, LeBlanc finally cleans up the kill on the Nautilus, and Lissandra is going to desperately try to protect this turret, but I think she's just going to have to give it up to survive as LeBlanc puts that aggression on her. Uh, Great W timing to survive it, but almost at uh, <laughs> death. And uh, finally, we see the tower go down, and it looks like uh, it's going to calm down a little. As I give you a moment to catch your <laughs> breath there, it <laughs> seemed like that fight was actually going on forever. Uh, I want to go all the way back to the start of that fight there, where we saw the J4 actually flash EQ onto the Olaf there and end up trapping with the... Or sorry, he ended up flash ulting onto the Olaf there, trapping him in there, and then EQing onto the Lissandra to get out of there, leaving Jesse stuck in the Cataclysm, not able to do anything, knowing that his flash wasn't up. And originally, it looked like kind of a sketchy play there, not knowing what they were going to get out of that. But as we saw, the Caitlyn and the Leona coming up from the bottom river, that actually was good enough to stall enough for this, their team to get there. Ended up taking that fight, and it looked like the Night Soap Wanted to try to re-engage that, try to get them on the low J4 there, but it just didn't end up working out here. And we already see a 4,000 gold lead in 16 minutes going over to the side of McMaster. They're going to end up taking Herald here, uh, taking that second Rift Herald. And uh, so, something, a little fun fact uh, from the official Riot casters is that this Herald is actually called Herald, and the first one is called Shelly. Oh, yeah. If, if we go back to last season when there was only one Rift Herald, it was called Shelly. Yeah, and then they had, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shelly. And then now they ended up, get, because there's two, they're like, wait, they can't both be Shelly. Only one of them can be Shelly. So they ended up calling the first one Shelly and the second one Harold. Bit of uh, brother-sister relationship going on with that, but sadly they'll uh, <laughs> never see each other at the same time. Well, uh, actually, something I want to talk about is that you could actually, if you take it at the right time here, and you have a Talia, and you have an Anivia, and then I think it's Trundle. Talia is a little bit of an option, but Talia, or sorry, Anivia and Trundle, you can actually stall out Shelly if you put it in your base with the with the terrain, and then you can actually wait and stall it out long enough that you can get the Herald, and then you can siege with both of them at the same time. That is terrifying, but <laughs> at the same time, it seems like they would be spending a lot of time yeah. in their own base. It's definitely more of a meme. Yes, yes. Right. Uh, so, to get back focus on to this current game, uh, what do you think Sinclair has to do to uh, start getting themselves back on this map? Well, Lissandra's actually doing pretty good for herself right Ooh, now. A lot of aggression saying. coming in. <laughs> she was doing pretty well for herself till she uh, started to step forward a little much. Uh, ooh, the alt timing from the Senna, not quite able to get it, and uh, the 3v1 creating an easy kill for uh, McMaster. Yeah, I, as I was just trying to say, it seemed <laughs> like Lissandra's actually doing very well for herself. Um, Young Falcon maintaining her own tempo, at staying above CS on Missile Blanc despite all of the jungle and bot lane pressure that they've been putting on this mid lane. So I definitely think that if St. Clair wants to get back in this game, they definitely got to sort of play off their mid lane and their top lane right now. As their jungle and their bot lane is so far behind, they're not exactly going to be doing much, but oh boy.
<laughs> Big fight coming in the top lane there. Uh, surprisingly, how easy uh, Set is able to win that trade. Uh, the W coming in as the W and the Grit coming in as just a big uh, fight turnaround. As it looks like there might be a scuffle in the jungle here as uh, McMaster Ooh. is aggressively positioning. Uh, Senna and Nautilus trying to separate so they're not able to get hit in the same thing. Uh, Jarvan going on to the Senna. Great uh, flash to avoid that. Uh, block. Blocking the ace in the hole, but LeBlanc uh, distortioning right on top of Nautilus to uh, take that kill as it looks like they're going to use that uh, kill and the pressure in the jungle to finally now move on to the dragon and take the dragon. And it seemed while that was happening, we actually saw, or what we didn't see was, we saw Kled actually engage onto the set with his ultimate and Olaf. And now that they know that Olaf is on the top side of the map, they didn't end up getting set. So that's just going to be a third Drake going over to the side of McMaster. They're going to pick up this Cloud Drake here, and that's going to give them 10% cooldown reduction on their ultimate abilities. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be a huge difference for almost all the characters. We've seen mm -hmm. uh, all the big plays that have been coming out on the side of McMaster have been around that cataclysm, yes. around that pressure it provides. And it's going to just be happening more and more as the game progresses as they continue to get those uh, Cloud Souls. Yeah, it seems like McMaster still is not letting St. Clair get back in this game. They're doing everything they can to play around these objectives. What I would not be surprised to see right now is that since Baron is on the map, we see Cloudrick happening in 430. There's not really any reason to be on the bottom side of the map right now. So what I would really like to see, we see the teleport on the set being up. I'd, I want set to go into that bot lane, maybe try to like pull Kled down there as well. We see Kled as TP, mm -hmm. but that's kind of irrelevant when you're this far ahead right now. As set can honestly just duel this Kled. Oh boy. Ooh, good flash coming in from Nautilus to get over the wall, but it's going to be at a very poor time when you want to be trying to get that Baron, Baron pressure and get in onto that back line. Uh, the less engaged that uh, this uh, St. Clair has, the worse it's going to get as they use uh, Harold to start getting the pressure onto that mid turret. Yes, Harold is actually going to be charging in here, getting it to minuscule health. Let's see. Red turret being destroyed uh, the here. Looking, the direct lookings like of a small skirmish as uh, LeBlanc uses a double to deport, distortion to get in, get some damage on the Nautilus. Surprisingly squishy for this point in the game. Uh, that mm -hmm. level disadvantage making a huge difference in uh, his own uh, tankiness. Uh, mm -hmm. Nautilus, because of uh, being a support, is very uh, uh, level-based for his scaling. So if he's not able to get those levels, he's just not able to uh, be as healthy in his fights. Oh, as it looks charged. like uh, St. Clair is going to take advantage of the fact that Jarvan is alone. Jarvan trying to flash over the wall, but not able to get away from the uh, charge. Oh. Ooh, that unfortunate... Uh, no. Blast Cone making it look like that Jarvan's going to be able to get away. Uh, Olaf desperately trying to chase, but Set getting into the position. And now Leona coming in on the Nautilus as Olaf is trying to pressure onto the Set. And uh, I completely lost track there. Uh, <laughs> uh, the kill coming out for uh, LeBlanc on the Nautilus. And big Cataclysm coming Whoa. out. All this damage. Uh, St. Clair just getting torn to shreds as uh, Kled finally picks up one kill onto. Uh, for the side of St. Clair, desperately trying to get a second onto the Caitlyn, but uh, the four, the five for one trade for uh, McMaster coming in as they start to take this Baron. That looked like it was going to be so good. I, I'm not sure what happened there. They ended up actually, the Kledal actually pulled him over the wall mm -hmm. because he was close enough to the J4 when he took that EQ over that he was actually able to follow up over it, and then they ended up all collapsing on him, but and then he ended up popping the stopwatch, but then they ended up hitting the blast cone for some reason, launching St. Clair all over the place, Olaf being on the other side of the wall. They just, they, it seemed just like they didn't know what to do. But something that I really wanted to talk about before this Baron fight here is not unless you mentioned how he was so squishy when LeBlanc, all that she did was throw the W onto mm -hmm. the onto the Nautilus underneath the mid turret here. And the reasoning for that is that we've seen what a lot of supports are doing right now is that they're actually rushing the Gargoyle Stone Plate into the mm -hmm. bottom lane. And although it doesn't actually give much health, it actually gives you a lot of base stats as far as armor, magic resist. And then when you go for these dives or when you try to like defend yourself from a dive, you pop that Gargoyle Stone Plate, you get enough health that you would probably lose in that amount of time before it fades out anyways. And then you're yeah. able to do a lot of early game pressure. But I'm really just, I, I, I don't see it. Why, he rushed Tabby's and then he started building Zeke's, but it's not enough. And he didn't get any magic resist until now anyways. And that's why LeBlanc was doing so much damage to him.
Yeah, and it's uh, it creates such a difference when your tank isn't able to tank. And uh, ooh, uh, Lissandra, I was thinking she might go in onto that, and I was a bit worried. But uh, trying to get that bit of pressure, the not realizing that they're sitting on a ward, that pink ward, uh, not quite in the proper spot to uh, see uh, the McMaster side uh, blue ward at the top there. Yeah, something notable to kind of pick up here is that as the Baron buff is going to fade away soon, we see that the Windrake is going to be spawning in about 40 seconds, and this mm -hmm. is sole point for the side of McMaster, and that's going to be absolutely huge. We talked about how important it's going to be to get the, the soul for McMaster here, and they're only one Drake away from getting it. Yeah, it's uh, as this game continues on, it's looking like uh, McMaster is able to play around the map a lot more using that uh, their objective control to have control of the map. Uh, set finally winning that trade against the Kled, he uh, tried to ult to get away, but not able to do it. Uh, McMaster is probably going to be looking for that gauge. You see that forward positioning from the Jarvan, Whoa. the main gauge coming in from the LeBlanc, jumping in behind to get the Senna as Jarvan comes in, uh, traps Nautilus, not able to help his teammates, just sitting there watching as. Uh, uh, Lissandra go as Olaf goes down, Lissandra is coming soon after as the uh, double O comes out for uh, the LeBlanc and now it's looking like uh, McMaster will finish this game in quick fashion. All five alive to zero defenders on the side of St. Clair here. Oh boy, wait a second. The turret actually gonna pick someone up. Night Soap gets the kill! <laughs> uh, that final kill coming out for the St. Clair just as this game comes to an end. Able to uh, maybe give a bit of uh, extra feeling to the St. Clair. Bit of a pat on the back. Right. Uh, so. Thoughts on that game? It looked like it might be a bit even at the start there. A bit of a negative trade mm -hmm. coming out in that mid lane right at the start, but it looked like St. Clair had a really good chance to bring it around, and then it just started really going downhill. What do you think were the main factors I for that? think although mistakes were made at the end there by the Leona giving that kill over to Nautilus, <laughs> I think a lot more mistakes were made on the side of St. Clair. I think that their early game macro was honestly a lot poorer compared to what we've seen mm -hmm. from them. I'm actually a little bit disappointed because we've seen them actually perform quite well, and it seemed like in the early game they're just they didn't have a shot caller. They didn't have a designated person saying, "Okay, this is the play. We need to do this." And then after we do this, we're gonna go take this objective, put these people into this lane, and we, we yeah. just didn't see that. It seemed like they were just kind of responding to all of the proactive plays that McMaster was doing, and they weren't actually creating a game plan of their own. And not only that, they're actually really, really lagging on their response as well. Oh yeah, and you could especially see it in their rotations. A lot of the time, McMaster would be making uh, making some form of trade, making something positive, or St. Clair would tr be trying to make something happen while Lissandra was backing in mid lane, while uh, Clyde had to leave, right? And a lot of the time, it was making that these trades that could have been uh, favorable uh, weren't even that first trade in the top lane was the not top lane in the mid lane was what we saw that with that set being able to come down and not able to close out the kill quick enough on the mm -hmm. LeBlanc making it that that change in the power diarchy from making a 2v2 to a 3v2 uh, completely changed that and allowed Jarvan to get that first kill and start to get that ball rolling starting to get yeah. tanky and then just continuing to provide the pressure yeah that being said uh, as we finish game one we will be right back uh, don't go anywhere and we'll be right back with game two. Oh yeah. 